All right, so we have a special guest here for Data Production today, Mr. Mike Greenidge, a family friend, a very close uh, friend of my father's. Um, you know, he's been helping, him out, helping me out a lot uh, going through this whole uh, media industry process and things mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, I'm really grateful that he took this time today, you know, to sit down and, uh, you know, rap me a little bit on, uh, on, you know, the city of Philadelphia and his career and uh, things on those lines. So, you know, I first wanted to start off uh, first is, you know, I saw in your uh, uh, over a drink uh, interview, you in the interview with uh, was it Ricky Harris? You uh -huh. said you kind of stumbled in this career, and so uh, can you describe on how like you stumbled into this career and um how, you know, you got your break into it? Yeah, like it was like for me, um, I had no plan, man. I stumbled into college, and just was whatever way the wind was blowing me, that's where I ended up, and so. When I um, got into college, by happenstance, I was working for a uh, electric contractor in high school. He went through a, through a divorce, laid everybody off. I, on a fluke, got a academic scholarship. I was like, yeah, I'll give college a try. Didn't have SATs, nothing. So but long story short, I got, in, so I got into college. I was a, um, a computer science major. This was like 89, 90. I was a computer science major. I had a lame advisor who says to me, there's some jobs in computers. Go figure that out, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, well, all right, I might as well do something I enjoy, man. Let me, uh, maybe I'll shoot music videos for a living. So I'll take television video production. And that's what I did, man. I studied that for four years. And then when I came out, I thought I was going to be more in-house, like doing more editing and, and post-production stuff. But I sent out maybe about 50 resumes, and the first place to call me back was a news station. It said they needed a photographer. I was like, all right, I'll pick up a camera and run the street, get me in the building, we'll see how I play out. And that was 1995. Okay. And I've been doing it ever since, That's man. A long time, you know, a long time in the business. Now, in a couple other uh, your interviews, you guys talked about uh, like the contrast on um, footage you capture within a day. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you know, one part of the day it could be like you know crime footage that you have to get, you know, like a homicide, a death, or something uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. And at the at the end of the end of the day, like you're doing, you know, an event like sports or like something like musical, a festival, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, can you uh, give me just like a memorable day? Uh, within your career where you like the contrast was just crazy for you. Oh, sheesh. Well, there's not one particular day because, you know, it happens so often, but there's been days like, for instance, when I used to work the night shift, I would come in some days, man, and maybe I'd start off and I'd do like a little happy-go-lucky you know, or maybe like a little press conference. Yeah. A little, the mayor's having a press conference. So I come in, I run out, shoot a press conference with the yeah. mayor. Then the sun go down, all of a sudden, I'm, Shh, this is Philly, the sun don't even gotta go down. Maybe five o'clock yeah. in the afternoon, and all of a sudden, there's a homicide. You know, so I'm running, go shoot that body. And then, like I've had nights <laughs> where I've come in, shot four different homicide scenes, and then ended up at like the Kimmel Center for, yeah. which is the Kimmel Center for Performing Arts, yeah. for the um, Philadelphia High School Orchestra, yeah. which are like the best kids in the city, yeah. you know, instrument wise, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it just kind of bugs your brain out, you know what I mean? Where you, you, you cover all this crime and punishment and so on and so forth. But then if you're fortunate enough, you can get to see you know, the, the, the highlights of the city. Or I've had nights where I've covered, you know, three or four or five different crime yeah. scenes and then having to do a Sixers post game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Run over to the Sixers, get post game. Now I'm sitting there, you know, and Allen Iverson is sitting at the yeah. table talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Or that's how long it's been since I don't <laughs> work nights anymore. Hey, I was still here last yeah, time I work yeah. nights. So, um, but you know, but it was that kind of, mm -hmm. that kind of fluctuation in what your assignments might be for the day. Yeah. And that's uh, pretty cool because I know like kind of a little bit of the evolution of your career. You talked about it. You know, you kind of started with the crime first. Now you're more into like the lifestyle uh, mm. things with like Mike Check and um, uh, things like that. 
Now, when was that like transition? Like, when did the, you know the station come to you and say, "Hey, we want to do like do mic check. We want you to get in the lifestyle." There, the, there really wasn't. It wasn't really the station coming to me and saying yeah. anything. It was more of a shift change. Okay. So it was kind of like when I got off of the night shift, and that was probably maybe seven years ago, seven, eight years ago. I don't even remember now, but. Once I got off the night shift and I started working for our morning show, mm -hmm. they do more lighthearted stuff okay. on the morning show. You know what I mean? It's a wake up show. It competes with Good Morning America and the other national morning show. So the, the content, I mean, if something breaks, obviously you cover the yeah. breaking news. But the, the overarching approach to the content is more lighthearted, more it's a new day, get up let's get your day started kind yeah. of thing. And so that's what kind of forced the transition. It wasn't a, a, a conscious transition. Okay. It was just different shift, different work, different you know? Work. And then um, and then, maybe about two years ago, one of my coworkers was the first person to get the Facebook mentions okay. app. Yeah. Like Facebook ran a beta test. Yeah. And they only gave it to about 100 people in the country. And she was one of the hundred people that happened to get it because of her following or whatever the case may be. And um, we're sitting in the car one day and she's like, you know, they gave me this app. Like they say we can go live right from my from phone. Yeah. I was like, really? She yeah. was like, yeah. I was like, hit the button and see what happened. So she hits the button and it says live. So I'm like, oh, so we're actually broadcasting right now? She's like, yeah. And, you know, we sat on it for about three, four minutes and then people started coming on to watch and started watching, watching, watching. It's like, dude, that's crazy. So from there, I was like, well, if we're going to do this, we should probably package it a little better. You know, so, so then it started with me adding music to it and yeah. getting topics, you know what I mean? And starting in the half so we have conversation and turning it into a morning show. Yeah. Fast forward, um, you know, the feedback that I was getting from people, they're like, oh, we enjoy the show, we like seeing you on, rah, rah, rah. And the station started sharing that on their Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. You know, so we might get 1,500 views by just us alone yeah. with her. And she had something like 30,000 followers at the time. Me, I had like 400. Mm -hmm. You know? Gotta start somewhere, you know? <laughs> Gotta start somewhere, right? And then, you know, but we would get maybe like 1,500 people yeah. would log on and hang out with us in the morning or views. Station, came to us one day and was like, listen, from now on, start your show at around 6.30 because we'll have somebody in the building who can share it. And so then they started sharing it and then we jumped from like 1,500 views to 15,000, mm -hmm. you know, 20,000 views off it. And based off that and the feedback we were getting from there, I went into the news director one day, I was like, hey man, I sent him an email actually. It's like, yo man, why don't you put me on TV? Got back at me. We sat down. We had a meeting. It was like, well, what makes you want to be on TV? I said, dude, you know, I've been, the feedback I'm getting from these cats from the Facebook thing, you know, people obviously enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, my commentary. Let's give it a shot. And that was the birth of Mike Check, man. He actually so. threw the name out. I wish I'd have came up with it. Mm -hmm. But, you know sad. what I mean? He threw it out and then boom, it's been, you know, it's been kind of fun riding. It's, yeah, that's been pretty cool. All right. So with the, the Mike Check, you know, with you're talking about you know going live and you ha you having um, you know that epiphany is like oh you can do this now and stuff I see you know with your social media you know YouTube uh, Instagram uh, you've been you know trying to stay ahead of the curve then you know your peers you know at your age you know trying to you know use everything at your disposal mm -hmm. to, you know to make sure you're still relevant and you're tr you know trying to build your brand up now. Um, so with, uh, what you're doing, like what, what makes you get up every morning? You know, like, uh, like what's your, like, where did the passion come from to, to kind of, um, <laughs> not only, you know, s they'll stick what you're doing, but, you know, try to, you know, take it to like the next level and like stay in the, in the modern age for the news. Just want more, man. It's the bottom line. You know what I mean? It's just that desire to, to try to be part of what's next. You know what I mean? I've been in media my whole adult life basically yeah. you know what i mean since i'm 20 21 22 years old so this is all i've done yeah you know and i watched the internet come up and take over basically you know there was a time when television didn't respect the internet they didn't think that the internet would ever be what it is yeah you know youtube came around 
And we were like, ah, nobody's gonna tune in to watch that garbage video. It's grainy, it's slow loading, yeah. nobody's interested. We're always gonna be the prominent delivery for yeah. content, yeah. you know, video content. And then, you know, friggin' fast forward, you get uh, broadband and, you know what I mean, high speed internet and all this stuff. And now all of a sudden, you can get broadcast quality video on the internet. Yeah. Go a little further. Now you can stream broadcast quality, yeah. high definite, you know, 4K quality video straight to your house. Yeah. And, and, and so when, when that happened, now television is playing catch up yeah. because people in your generation aren't turning on the TV. Yeah. Nobody's watching anything in real time anymore. No. You know what I'm saying? So we were... And even till today, TV competes with DVRs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so like our newscast will might lose. Like who who's beating us when we look at the ratings? Who's winning yeah. in the ten o'clock hour? Yeah. And when you look at it, it's people watching shows that they recorded at eight o'clock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now yeah. they finally got the kids to bed. They can relax. They sit and turn on their eight o'clock. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, whatever show they normally would watch at that hour, mm -hmm. if they could sit and watch it, but they don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. You know, and so when I seen all that stuff happening, because originally, and it's still rough for me to find my lane yeah. on on the internet, you know. But I was like, yo, if you're gonna be part of this, if you're gonna be part of what's next, yeah. you got to be part of what's right now. Yeah. And what's right now is this internet is popping. Yeah. So you better try to figure out. A space for yourself. Yeah, how to get into on, it. Correct. Yeah. And so that's is what prompted the, you know, and actually it was when Instagram came around. Yeah. Because before Instagram, we had Twitter and we had uh, Facebook, but it didn't have pictures and video. Yeah. Like, I'm a videographer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how I tell stories. Yeah. Instagram came along and it gave me that ability, that ability. to tell stories via pictures. Mm -hmm. And that's where... I think I finally made my full transition to mm -hmm. saying, all right, this is where I can, mm -hmm. this is a platform I can work on. Nope. And then everything it followed, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. after that. <laughs> you know, you deal with a little bit more day-to-day -day, like reality than what I do. Like what, what I do is usually, um, it's storytelling, but mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's fake. You know, it's trying like for more entertainment and, yeah. and stuff like that. But I feel like there's a lot of similarity, similarities as well, you know, how, um, you know, the hours work, you know, they're still mm -hmm. crazy. You still have to, you know, to get the shots, uh, even, you know, in uh, like a short amount of time. And, you know, there's deadlines and things like that. Now, um, what for a person like me, do you, do you have any advice for a person like getting in this industry? Uh, like, what are some uh, things to look out for, some pitfalls to, you know, stay away from and things well, like that? Well, what I tend to tell people who are coming into the industry now, man, is don't, let don't eat the negative energy that comes yeah. because there's a lot of backstabbing in this industry mm -hmm. there's a lot of naysayers in this industry there's a lot of you know that that kind of energy there's a lot of negative energy in this industry and like you know i've heard people tell interns well, why'd you do TV for a living, man? No jobs. Hey, why are you doing this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, and like talking them out of, yeah. like somebody just committed four years of their college yeah. career to this, and they come here hoping to get some kind of motivation to the next stage in their life, and you're shitting on, yeah. you know what I mean, their dream. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what kind of person does something yeah. like that? So my, oh, my thing has always been don't let the negative energy mm -hmm. destroy your motivation. Okay. Is what I always tell, like the, the interns that come into our okay. building and, and young people ask me about getting into this industry. And then from there, it becomes once you get once you that you understand that, then my next thing is create content and just keep putting it out in the world. Okay. Keep putting it out in the world, man. You don't have to wait for anybody anymore. You know, when I came into the industry, I had to get a job at a TV station, basically. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can produce your own stuff, but the gear was so expensive yeah. that there was no vehicle for you to deliver your product. Yeah. You st either way, you know, you can burn it to a DV to a, a, a VHS at the time, really, when I came in. But eventually, you know, you can burn DVDs and try to sell them out of the trunk of your car or something like that. But there was no 
direct to the consumer yeah. lane. Yeah. Now with the internet, man, it's all everybody, every, my favorite thing to tell young people is listen, man, everybody has their own network. Mm -hmm. Grow your network yeah. and feed your network. And that's it, man. And, and, and really, it'll get to a point if you're really good, people will find you. Mm -hmm. And if your network gets large enough, TV can't afford you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had a young lady one time say to me, an intern, she's the same question you just asked. Mm -hmm. And she says, and I says, and I've started my spiel like, you know, need your Vimeo popping, you need your Instagram yeah. popping, you need your YouTube popping, this, that, and the third. I said, you got any of that stuff up and running? She said, yeah, I got a YouTube page. I said, oh, yeah, sir. So how's it do? She said, oh, I got about 50,000 subscribers. I said, so why are you talking to me? Yeah, keep going. That's she was like, well, I want to do TV. I said, what are you doing on your page? She says, well, I do makeup tutorials. She's like, actually, Maybelline offered me $2,500 to do, to run an ad in front of one of my That's the goal. videos. That's the goal. I said, listen, I said, so you do that four times a month. That's 10 grand a month. I said, that's $120,000 a year. I said, where do you think you're gonna come straight, straight out of college into television and get 120 grand a year? Never gonna happen. No. Never gonna happen. I said, you're gonna get to the point, you keep growing your thing, you'll get to the point where TV can't even afford you. That's real. And you're controlling your own destiny yeah, that's at that real. point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what every young person should be striving yeah. for in this game. You don't need these major outlets anymore. You know what I mean? Internet killed the record industry. Internet can potentially kill the, the television industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least as far as talent goes. Yeah. You know, it's still going, what's going to happen? They're going to shift their delivery is yeah, what's going to exactly. happen. So instead of delivering you shows through via cable, they're going to deliver them oh, to you via the internet, yeah, right? Exactly. That's going to happen. Nothing you can do about that. But you can raise the bar and raise your value to these people by coming to them and saying, listen, man, I got 120,000 people that log on to watch me. You know what I mean? Man, whenever I post something, I'm 500,000 people or whatever your number is. Mm -hmm. I don't need y'all to get money. Yeah, exactly. Y'all need me to bring you viewers. Exactly. You know that's what I mean? Real. So that's what that that's the advice I give a lot of young people. And I don't care if you're doing film, TV, music, whatever it is. If you're in the media, work your own network. Everybody has their own network, yeah. man. And when you're young, it's way easier to grow your network. Mm -hmm. When you're 47, yeah. you know, I got my wife, my kids, a couple homies. You know what I mean? So it's a lot harder. When you're in college, mm -hmm. Every day you're meeting new people. Every yeah. weekend you're partying someplace new. You build that network, build that network, build that network, and boom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you've been in uh, Philly for, you know, the last 20 years and mm -hmm. stuff. And so, like, we're switching over to a little bit of sports yeah. and with the Eagles. You know, I'm uh, shooting a documentary, The Endless Season, where I'm uh -huh. following the, the Eagles all, all uh, season long, going to every away city and every away game to, you know, just get the traveling fans' perspective. I just got back from Nashville this week. It was insane. Um, it was like Philadelphia in Nashville. Like we took over the city, just like you know, like clockwork. That's yeah. what we always do. And I know you're not like crazy, crazy in the sports, uh, like you know, like I am. But like you've covered the events. Like I know you covered the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like you went to Minnesota as well. Can you describe like you know, like the city has went through like highs and lows within your your time here? And like can you just describe you know the evolution of the city like from going to uh, four uh, NFC Championship games and not winning, and you know now having a Super Bowl ring. Well, let me, here's the best I could do for you in that lane, right? Because like you said, I, I'm a general fan. You know, I watch when it's on because I know I'm gonna have to talk about it yeah. in the street. You know what I mean? But the energy in the city when they win, it's, it's something like I've never seen before. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the up and down, like, cats will not go to work on Monday if the Eagles lose. It's the most craziest thing I've ever heard of. I remember we had a guy who actually worked, a sports anchor. Yeah. I don't remember what year it was, but they lost the NFC Championship. The freaking guy didn't come back for the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> like, dude, you're the sports guy. Yeah. How do you not show up because the Eagles lost? You're so depressed, got drunk, ain't show up. That's crazy. Ain't come back to work. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. The game was over at 7. Whatever it was, dude, nowhere to be found at 10 o'clock when it's time to do the news, mm -hmm. right? But 
it's 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 that's what I've noticed the most. Like you know, I've done tailgates. You know, when I worked weekends and I go down there and just the energy in the um in the parking lot yeah. alone. You know, you got guys who don't even go in the games. No, that's true. You got guys who only pay for a parking space. Yeah. And they will set up, grill, TV, and be there all day. Yeah. All day. So game is at one o'clock in the afternoon. They've been out there since seven o'clock in the morning when they opened yeah. up the gates or whatever time they decide to open the gates and people will go out there man and they will drink and party all day till game yeah. time some of them will nap sleep off the, excuse me sleep off the drunk mm -hmm. and then wake <laughs> up and go into the yeah. game yeah. you know what i mean so that is what what i've noticed the most like the passion mm -hmm. that these that philadelphia eagles fans have for that team is unbelievable. And the way that the city, the city, the atmosphere in the city rises and falls. Like, you know, they went on Monday, on a Sunday night, Monday morning, everybody's got great energy at yeah. work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They lose, it's like. It's a whole different other town. Yeah, it's like drab is down, energy is down in the city. So that being said, last season, when they, you know, made it to the Super Bowl and then they won, it was like, you know, leading up to it, the city was just on high. And it's been, the city's been let down so many times mm -hmm. that people were almost hesitant to be so yeah. energized and so happy yeah. that this was about to happen, that they were yeah. going to the Super Bowl because they didn't want to jinx anything. Exactly. Yeah. Very superstitious. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Very superstitious, a lot of the fans in the city. And, uh, and, and you know, so that that's probably... From my perspective, what I've noticed the most is just how these people, they just ride or die with yeah. this team, man. And you not being a fan like myself, who's just not a sports guy, mm -hmm. never really gave a damn about sports, mm -hmm. was a, a fan of whatever city I was living in. Yeah. You know, when I came to Philly, you know, you could be out anywhere doing anything, you know what I mean? And it's like, what you think of those Eagles? Yeah. What you think of those Eagles? I'm pumping gas. What you think of those Eagles? <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm buying lunch meat. What yeah. you think of those eagles? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm doing laundry. What you think of those eagles? And finally, I had to start paying attention mm -hmm. because when you don't answer or you <laughs> give like a little generic <laughs> answer, people look at you yeah. like, you ain't watch the game? Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, is, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what red-blooded American wouldn't be watching the eagles yeah. on a Sunday? You know what I mean? So that that's really what I noticed, man. And the other thing, man, was how um, it brings people together, man. And that's another thing I like about it, man. Like, like one of my close friends in the city, um, and your brother, your father knows him. Um, like, I called him on a Sunday one time. He's like, "Oh, I'm going to my pop's house to watch the Eagles game." And I was like, "You know what? I'm not gonna ever bother just doing on a Sunday again, man, because." That Eagles game is family time for yeah. him and his brother and his father. Yeah. And his mom's maybe is upstairs cooking. His mom's might be down there watching, you know, because the women are just as crazy about the, the, the team as the, as the men are. Um, but whatever the case, you know what I mean? His, um, you know, I, it was a conscious decision. Like, yo, Mike, man, yeah, you may not be that, you may not care very much, yeah. but this is, this, this game brings families together on Sunday. They may not see each other all week. Mm -hmm. They may not even talk to each other all week, but they know on Sunday at game time, they're going to be together. Going off what you're saying before I get to my last question, like family time uh, with that, um, that's how like me and my father, uh, you know, connect with each other because, you know, we've traveled around a lot. He works a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like we live on uh, different states now, but we always you know, try to find time uh, to, you know, to talk about the Eagles on Sunday or, you know, go to a couple games in an away city and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And that's what kind of, um, you know, prompted me to do this documentary as well because it's what kind of, you know, uh, what, uh, you know, it, it, the emotional strings yeah. to the team and stuff like that. Yeah. So I know exactly what you mean. And also, um, economy-wise, like, I'm not, I don't live in Philadelphia, but uh -huh. just from the outside, like, I've, been working in uh, Philadelphia for a little bit. I had a couple of days when I was working with CNN a little bit where, you know, it's a Wednesday night and, you know, like the hipsters, the, you know, the young cats are just, you know, up and around town, like they're 
putting up new apartments and stuff like that. You know, it's still a gritty city, mm-hmm. but there it, it just feels like with the sports, it's kind of getting a little bit more upbeat, up tempo, and, and things along those lines and stuff like that. So that's just from my perspective. Yeah, right, and so. and I mean, the city has been going through a bit of a resurgence yeah. for years. I mean, you see downtown, you know, there's new condos, new buildings and all that. But, I mean, you get into some of the neighborhoods, the city is still, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's still a gritty, yeah. dirty, grimy city. Yeah. You know what I mean? And But, you know, that's part of, it's weird to me because I'm a transplant too. You know what I mean? I've been here 20 years. But it's almost like some people take pride in that. Like, it's, it's weird to me. It's a concept I never understood. That underdog, grimy, gritty energy. And they like it. And they thrive off of yeah. it. You know what I mean? I grew up in New York City. So my mindset is always like top of the world. Yeah. Like, we better than everybody. Mm-hmm. You know? And then when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, I was my first thought was, how is this city going to make the transition to that we're number one energy? We're not an underdog anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're the dog now. Like, now you got to see us now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I honestly, I think it's they've had a tough time with that. You know, because they've played that underdog role for so long mm-hmm. that they don't know how to be the top dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though you're it, yeah. you don't know how to wear the coat. You yeah, know what exactly, I'm saying? You don't exactly. know. Like, it just don't quite fit you. Yeah. You were happier when you were the underdog yeah, almost. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and so that it's, and it's weird and it's kind of like if you look at, you know, the season right now, it's almost kind of like that's yeah. what they're, they're mm-hmm. you know, from a, I don't know, I guess a psychological perspective, not that I'm a psychiatrist, but that's how I view yeah. the games, you know what I mean? That's how mm-hmm. I view it because I don't really get caught up in yeah. the sports stats of yeah. it, you know what I mean? I get caught up in the social stats of it yeah. and, the, and, the, and, the, and the effect on the city you know what i'm saying and so i i look at it from that perspective and look at the players and i look at the team and i look at the energy and i look at you know what's going on in the city and i'm like dude you know i'm like man like maybe winning the super bowl as much as we wanted it yeah they they, they're like struggling because Mm -hmm. they don't have anybody to fight against anymore you know what I'm Gro- saying? Hopefully that's good growing pains. Like, Correct. You know, hopefully Correct. that's just good growing pains. Correct. We, we get through that and stuff. And so my last question uh, for you, and thank you for taking this time out. I really enjoyed your, you know, your answers. I've learned a lot. Um, but now it's you doing like, you know, over the drink. You know, you're evolving within your career and, you know, uh, things on those lines. What's – and, you know, my, my brand is uh, Data Production Dreams are Tangible Aspirations. Like, what's what's your – What's your vision? What's your dream out of all this? You know, you say you want to do more. Do you have something that you want to, like, um, to reach? You know what, Art? That's a funny you ask that question because I've never actually had a freaking dream. Dude. Mm-hmm. I, like I told you at the beginning, man, yeah. I just went whatever way the yeah. wind blew me. And that's probably been a blessing and a curse for me. Yeah. You know, because I've had some people ask me often, you know what I mean? Not often, but... I've had the question asked enough times that you would think I'd have an answer by yeah. now. Like, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? Where do you see yourself? Yeah. Where do you... And, you know, really for me, it's just always, I just wanted to be in it, man. But I never knew what being in it meant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, 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 it, it's, it's just, so, so, just going with the flow for so many years it's got me to where I'm at. I can't really complain. You know, I make a decent job and make a decent living. My family's comfortable. Yeah. No complaints. No you know complaints. what I mean? Yeah. But the moment I noticed the wind wasn't blowing my way no more, then it was like, well, damn, Mike, you ain't got no plan. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So what are you going to do now? What's, what's your plan? And so I don't know, man, to be honest with you, man. I want to, I'm, I'm hoping to stay relevant. I mean, there's things that I, you know, I like to do documentaries, you know what I mean? I like to, uh, uh, you know, and that's probably produce quality video content. Yeah. It's, you know, it's always just been something I, that, that, that I wanted to do. 
But that being said, when you say, well, what do you mean by produce quality video content? What kind of content do you want to produce? Do you want to do sitcoms? Do you want to do, you know, and I'd like to move towards program creation. Okay. I want to create programming. Mm -hmm. It's probably the, the, the most concise answer that I can come up with. That being said, I haven't figured out how to get into that lane yet. But on the other side of that, with, again, brings back to everybody having their own network, you don't have to get approval from anybody to produce your own programming. You can make your own program on Instagram, on YouTube. You can make Bing. your own sitcom, whatever. Bing. And this is what so. I've, so that's part of my transition right now is, and that's what, you know, you mentioned over a drink. That's what over a drink was, the beginning steps of yeah. trying to move towards creating content. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it was one of those things where I used to rack my brain because from a technical standpoint, I felt like everything had to be perfect. You know, I had to have the right lighting, I had to have the right cameras, I had to write the right audio, and I had to write, I had to write this, that, and the third. And you're like, dude, you ain't got that money for that. And you can't put together those yeah. kind of teams. And sometimes the best things that go viral, some of the most popular things, there's somebody with like an iPhone 5 Correct. in 2018, Correct. you know, doing a little jig Correct. with a little glare in the back, Correct. but that's what's like hot. But that's what's hot, right? Yeah. So one day I just said, you know what, man? And the same advice that I gave you earlier about, you know what I mean, shaking off the negative. I put everybody out of my head. Yeah. So one day, and this was maybe, this was just recently, this was this year. I mean, I've had these thoughts and I've been going through this process, yeah. this growing process in my head, but um, to put it in motion, it was when I did the first over a drink yeah. and it was like, I put everybody out of my head. I took no input. I took no, I said, my wife, even my wife, she said, what are you doing? None of your business. This is, I don't want anybody else's input on this. This is my project from beginning to end. Too many times, I think we allow outside influences yeah. to come in on what it is we want to accomplish. Yeah. And they, they, they can't see your vision. You know what I'm saying? And it took me some time to learn that. It took me some time, like even I went in and pitched a story, a, a show idea, and this was actually what opened my eyes to it. My company started producing shows locally. So everybody had show ideas. So I went and pitched one, and I realized two things. I wasn't ready to pitch a show because I didn't really understand how to pitch it. The other thing was is I can't expect other people to see my vision. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, without producing it for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't expect them to understand what's in your head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until you give them the visuals to look at, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so that's what prompted me to say, you know what? Forget all the grandioses of it. I'm gonna take my camera, I'm gonna take a couple lights, I'm gonna take a couple microphones, I'm gonna start sitting down and talking to people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing you're doing. Yeah. Sit down and talking to people. And then I'm gonna take that, people who I find interesting. You may not find them interesting. I don't give a shit. These are people I find interesting. Yeah. These are stories that I want to hear, stories I want to tell, stories I think have value in telling. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that Correct. Like those stories. So. Correct, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, from doing what I do, doing news for a living, you learn everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And when you sit down and talk to people, sometimes you get past that first layer and you realize like, whoa, this dude's background is insane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The things this person or this woman has been through to get her to this point is unbelievable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or what they deal with on a daily basis mm -hmm. just for survival yeah. is crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we walk around every day, we see millions of people and you have no clue what these people, are, you know what I'm saying? Their, their, their story is. Yeah, exactly. And so that was, I was like, I don't need all this other stuff. I don't need all the extra. Mm -hmm. All I need is this camera. You know what I'm saying? And a conversation. Exactly. And let's rap and see what I can pull out of that. 
And that was what it was, man. And I did that, man. And I sat and I created the open and I found the music and I edited it down and, you know, and kept it simple. You know what I mean? You know, at one point I was like, oh, I need multiple cameras. I need this, this, this. Keep it simple. This way you can finish it. Yeah. Was my theory. You know what I'm saying? If you complicate it too much, you won't get it done. Yeah. That's why you haven't done anything to this point. So keep it simple so you can finish it. And this way, it, at least you'll know you got that done. And now you can move on to something else. Mm -hmm. You know, but if I'm stuck, still trying to get the first thing done, yeah. how do I get to the second thing? Or you jump to the second thing, first thing's incomplete, and you just have a litany of incomplete, incomplete stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what it was for me, man. And that's that's was the beginning, I think, of my really starting to take my my brand yeah. basically serious. You know what I mean? And that and that's where I'm at right now, man. It's just trying to grow my brand, grow Michael Greenwich as a brand, yeah. as opposed to, you know what I mean, a videographer as a brand yeah. or you know what I'm saying? A company as a brand or whatever. Because now, I mean, hell, if I can get it again, like we said, man, you get somebody to throw you a couple of dollars just for being Art Turner. You can make a career out of that. You, you know? can make a career out of that. There's people doing it every day. Yeah. Yeah. And now if you can do it and you have a skill and a talent, something else behind it. It just exponentially grows from there. Correct. So. Correct. And that was what I think I had to wake up to was everybody has a camera. Everybody has cell. Oh, Their phone is a camera. Yeah. They got, you know, DSLRs. Everything is cheap now. Like I said, when I came in, you couldn't buy this stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just too expensive. You know, but now everybody has it, yeah. right? So what do I have over everybody else? This is what I had to stop and think yeah. about. What do you have, Mike, that most of these people who are running around with video cameras don't have? Well, you have 25 years of storytelling yeah. experience. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Got to parlay that and you'll be so straight. So everybody can shoot. Anybody can pick up a camera and hit record. Anybody can throw video onto a computer and get all the best graphics and mm -hmm. the best transitions and the best this and the best that. But when you break it down to its barest essence, was it a quality story? Yeah. Or was it just a bunch of flash? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's where, that was, that was, that's my approach. That's was my awakening, you know what I'm saying? Is And that's what I think that, that that Over a Drink series for me was a challenge in that sense. It was like, dude, all you got is a camera and a microphone. How are you gonna make this worthy of somebody sitting and giving you 10 minutes at a time mm -hmm. or 15 minutes at a time to watch it? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Cause you're exactly. not wowing them with anything mm -hmm. other than the conversation. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So that was, that, that was my challenge, man, and I tried to, and that's why there's not a whole lot of them, because I try to find people who can carry, because there's interesting people who just suck on camera. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got yeah, to find, you got to find that balance yeah. of people whose stories are interesting and they have a good character. Mm -hmm. So they can, you know what I mean? They, they, they can get, they can speak their story, yeah. you know what I mean, into the world and, and, and it comes across in a manner that somebody wants to sit and spend a couple minutes yeah. watching it. You know what I mean? Because there's a good billion places you can go on the internet and watch something else. Yeah. Why do you want to sit here with mine? It's awesome. You know what I mean? Man, Mike, thank you for the interview. That was great. All your <laughs> all your answers were amazing and everything like that. We're at the uh, Apple uh, Hostel in Philadelphia. Um, make sure you go check out uh, Over a Drink on YouTube. Where can they find you at on Instagram and things like at that? At Mike Greenwich, M-I-K-E-G-R-E-E-N-I-D-G-E, -E -E, on okay. all of them. On all of them. Every place, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all whatever right. else is out there, mm -hmm. YouTube. YouTube, and uh, watch them for the, the Mike Checks on well on the news channel. On Mike Check, all right? catch that on Fox so, 29 uh -huh. every now and again. If not, I'll post them there. I usually try to post them, uh -huh. you know, not everybody's in the city. And Amazing. I never know when they're coming on. There. Amazing. So Well, thank you for Brother stopping Art, by. I appreciate you no hanging problem. with me, man. Give me a call, man. Enjoy your time in the city. And, dude, just before you wrap this up, man, yeah. I want to tell you, man, I really admire what you're doing here, man. Thank you. Dude, you kind of, like, jumped off a bridge with this one. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Like, when you told me what you thought, like, yo. 
Did he just say he could go from city to city, yeah. chasing these <laughs> damn eagles to do a documentary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. So. You young man. This yeah. is when you do it, man. Quarter, good quarter for you, through, man. So. Good for you, man. Thank you. Have a good time, man. I hope you. I'm sure you're meeting all kind of characters, oh, man, know. and I'm sure you're having a ball, man. And, and you know, and your pops taking to the freaking Super Bowl. Like, get out of here, man. Get out of here, man. You doing all right, man. Yes. You're doing all right. But nah, man, but I really do, man. I think this is pretty cool what you're doing, man. And I and I and I admire you for having the courage mm-hmm. to step right. out. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? To say, you know what? Throw caution to the wind. You know what I mean? When is a better time to do it than now? Yeah. You know what I mean? You gotta good support system you got you know you're a smart kid go do it now man don't wait you don't want to like me i waited i'm 47 playing catch up she's 27 the game, in though, the game so. you know what i'm saying i'm trying to catch up to you though man. <laughs> you know what i mean y'all yeah. young cats running away from me man i'm trying to i'm exercising this shit i'm in the gym trying to keep you. my stomach flat you know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all raising the game. Yeah, 50 was... Cent took his shirt off, changed everything, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> man. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, hopefully I'm trying to, you know, hit the film festival next year and hopefully I may, you know, make a good product that everybody can enjoy. You know, whether Definitely. you're a sports fan, a travel fan, or you just like documentaries and want to learn about something. So Beautiful. You know, that's the goal. Beautiful, man. Wish you all the best, brother. Thank you. Wish you all the best as well. Thank you, man. Thank you.